Here is one of the boots that I picked up at the boot sale. It's a rubber boot and black, a little bit of green. Now you've got choices here. You can either leave it as it is, fill it and put our plants in it. You can fold the tops down, a little goat, to give it that uh, last of a summer wine look, I suppose. So that is, uh, we'll go over in a minute. your video is I can cut any bits out and make me look as if I'm not managing. There we go, we can cop round. A little bit more even. A bit of trim. Or you could paint it. Um because I have two boots, I've got a black both sides. I've also got a different style. Uh, I picked these up at a boot sale, someone was kicking them out. These are steel toe caps, so um, I mean you could hang this one if you wanted to. But I am going to paint these. This is a, a canvas. That's a rubber. Before painting, the rubber one will need a bit of a scuff just to get the paint to adhere uh, to it. Doesn't really matter what type of paint. It's going to sit outside, and you want that kind of faded look anyway. So uh, you don't necessarily need an external paint. You just want something that's going to give it the effect you're after. Okay, right. A bit of sandpaper. Doesn't need a lot. Actually, uh, I tend to keep most of my off cut bits because when it comes to distressing things, you don't always need the best bit. You need just something that's going to give you an effect. So we just need to give it a scrape. And when it comes to painting, you've got options. You can either so use a brush, a bit of wipe over, or um, you can get use a spray paint. It's really up to you. Or said uh, you can just leave it as it is. It doesn't need masses amount. Just just so that the, and the paint goes on. And of course, you can, whatever colour you want, or whatever effect you want, you know what colour scheme on the plants you're putting in, where you want it to sit in relation to the rest of the garden. It's all just about really what feels good to you. There's no right or wrong ways that I found with all upcycling. If you try and concentrate on getting something right, getting this, getting that, then it tends not to work. Just go with the flow see how it comes out, nine times out of ten, you'll be surprised at how, good, how good it looks, how well it looks. And everybody's idea is slightly different, everyone sees it slightly differently, so you just got to go really with how you feel. Right. So that's had enough of a scuff, I hope I'm not pulling this out of view of the camera. Right. Okay, next step. is give them a paint. Okay, right. I've got a kind of a bluey green. It's an Annie Sloan chalk paint uh, called Provence. It's one I'm going to use on this boot. And an antique chalky white, which I'm going to use on that boot. I haven't bought these specifically for these, I tend to do more furniture and that's why I've got these paints. So I've just grabbed what's on the shelf. I wanted a white, I wanted a greeny, bluey colour. These ones match. Um, I've not seen any superiority in the types of different, these different types of paint. They just tend to do what I need to do. And if it's something you're going to get into over time, then you know, just experiment with different things. There's other brands out there. Uh, I bought the Annie Sloan one online because of the colour. Um, Rust-Oleum I probably tend to use a bit more because my local DIY store stocks it so if I need it I can just pop out, get a bit what and come back, it's only around the corner. Whereas I have to wait for this to come online because I don't have an Annie Sloan supplier close by. If I did I'd probably have a bit more of a mixture. So there are other ones out there but um, 
it's just you find what you like don't you and then you tend to stick with it so when it comes to painting we're not really bothered whether it's neat and tidy we want it to give it that kind of rushed look so we've got some of the black coming through it's just really to uh, give it that outside been left ignored kind of look um, there's lots of modern phrases shabby chic all this other nonsense whatever you know wherever you want to go just chucking it in with chalk chalk paints are designed to pretty much go on anything so uh, they will paint on easier but you could have could put down for about 10 hours you can get a tin of spray paint whack that over I mean, the idea of sort of this is to have a bit of fun, make it look good, or make it look the way you want it, and uh, but not spend loads of money or loads of time. If you have a look on the website, upcycledandrelove.co.uk, or if you're seeing this on the website, there's quite a few articles on various bits and pieces and all through it you know I, I, I focus on the fact that this should be a bit of fun something to enjoy and not expensive you don't want to go spending loads and loads of money so there we go and this is the other thing I like about upcycling and a bit of shabby shaking is the better the paint job the worse the effect so that's that one then we'll get the the other thing about the chalk paint is it does dry quite quickly so within a, an hour this will all be good now this is going to be a bit well this, this is going to be an experiment so I don't know whether this is going to look good kind of but this paint will darken down when it dries it's a bit bright at the moment isn't it so, uh, but then again if, it, if I don't like it I can just paint over it I wasn't happy with the brown, I didn't think that had the effect I wanted. Or go with the plants I tend to put in. And the advantage of these tags here is that this could be, if you want it to be, it could be a hanging boot rather than a sitting boot. If you wanted to, you could just put a couple of different colours on. See what that looks like. So once it's been outside and had been weathered, the paint will fade and it'll kind of blend in and become that, give it that look like it's always been there, which is what you're after. And the boot, you don't want to take the boot off, the, the presence of the boot away from whatever flowers you're going to put in. Alright, okay, I think that's enough. So we don't want to cover it completely, we just want it to make it look as if it's had a bit of a life. Okay, let that dry and then we'll come back for the next steps. Okay, paint's pretty much dry enough for us to get going. Although I like the idea of this green, to me it's just a little bit light, so I'm just going to dirty it up a bit. What you can get, especially if you're going to do maybe some furniture stuff, is a finishing wax. You can get clear or dark, this is a bit dark, it's great for just toning down, so I'm just going to give us a brush just to make it look a little bit more dirty. It just looked a bit too clean to me for... I know over time it probably would have worn down anyway, but I just wanted it to be a bit more grubby. So it's just random bits over it. No think specifics, giving it a go. I mean, it's up to you. If you prefer it the way it was, great. If you want a different, like I said earlier, one more thing about upcycling. It's all about you. It's all about what makes you feel good and what you like to see. It's not about satisfying other people's needs. So there, so for me, it's got a bit more of a grubbier look. Okay, 
Okay. So I'll just put a coffee jar in there to uh, keep them upright. Okay. So first things first, once we've painted, is just to stick around in and pull out any insoles we might have in there, because we don't want them. I haven't got any, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, we need to drill some holes in the bottom. Now you can use a hand drill if you've got one, or battery one. I'm going to use the uh, power one because it's easier. If you do get industrial boots, just be aware that some of them have a steel plate in the bottom. So if you try and drill through and you're not getting anywhere, that might be why. So don't worry, you can always go in around the sides. But, uh, so I'm just going to drill in. Couple of holes. Won't miss a lot. It goes in quite quickly. You can do a few around the sides. Just to let any water to get to drain out. Let's put the steel there. That's that one. This one. It doesn't have to be loads, just enough to get it to drain. Okay, next what we want to do is just put some gravel in the bottom. And it can be small, thick, thin or a few stones, whatever you've got. It's to, again, it's to aid the, uh, the drainage. If you put your soil in the top, you don't want it blocking the holes, you want to get some... Just so there's a layer along the bottom, really. Okay. Once that's done, get your uh, potting soil, compost, whatever it is you've. Even if you dug up some soil from the garden, this takes a time and is a messy bit. So make sure it gets right down there. Now, uh, because this boot's quite high, it's going to take quite a bit. I mean. I could have cut it, maybe cut the top and maybe shortened it, but I don't know, it's, it's whatever make, it's whatever you want, it's whatever you want to do, it's a great about upcycling. Make sure it's in. Then you probably want to come about two thirds of the way up. Because we've got to see get the plants in, then we've got to pack in around the plants, so you're not quite, well probably more than two thirds of them, not quite to the top. As you can see, I'm just coming to the top there, and do the same with this. Now some people like to put a plastic bag in as a liner. I can see that and maybe as a help to pull out or change, but these days, the uh, plastic bags, most of them are supermarket ones, are biodegradable, so all that's going to happen over time is it's going to go brittle and crumble, and as you you can have bits of plastic bag and everything, so, and you want this to rot, you want it to go damp and pick up any uh, sort of algae and stuff, just to give it a look, so again, almost to the top. So now I'm going to get my plants. Okay, I've got some trailing viola and some pansies. And what I'm hoping is is that uh, we can get a bit of a flow. I mean, the best the, the, once you put these in, they take time to really sort of come effect. Because once they, they, they kind of spring out and fall over, then that really makes the makes the planter generally. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of plonk in a pansy and then a viola and so on, and just see how it. How it looks initially, so um, tricky bit now to get these out without doing any damage. Right, 
been in there a while, and they look. Gotta be honest, I'm not that much of a gardener, more of an upcycler. So, uh, for those of you who are green fingered, you're probably cringing at the moment at the way I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to put a bit more. Well, I apologise for that. So, if anyone's got any, wants to give some comments or email about the correct way of installing plants into uh, soil. I'm extremely happy and pleased to hear from you. Right. Yeah. There we go. I'll put the pansy at the front. I mean, hopefully we get a bit more out of there. So, I mean, for me, I like the wild, all over the place look. I mean, what would be really nice is think we get some more and put some um, meadow seeds in and let them grow over the summer. That would probably come out quite nice. I was hoping for a bit more. We got. I, mean, I did get these in the reduced section, so it might be. needs to look nice we want it to but we don't want it to be expensive take that one out put that one in that's better and put that in a pot right there we go look at that now to me it's wild and wonderful, so I do apologise to those of you who are green fingered and know what you're doing. Uh, I make probably making an awful mess, so I do apologise. Comments and advice and guidance, what one of the uh, reasons for the website is to help people learn, create, expand, and uh, hopefully I'll have a, it'll give me a learning process as well. So. I think you can see where I'm going. I'm looking for this, say, this wild, probably a bit over the top look. So uh, what we're doing, give this a good water, and then we can put it outside, and that'll be. Yeah, let's make sure that's in. Okay. Hopefully, it doesn't look too crazy. I mean, these will turn round when I get them in the sun and face the sun. product. Um, didn't take too long. Uh, I have redone this one a bit. Looks much better and I appreciate that these are probably over full but I just wanted to give you the effect so I may have to take one out because I do have the other pair to do. Um, but it's just so you could got an idea of what what, what can be achieved. Uh, but yeah so they'll probably have double them up a bit much because they will need space to grow and that might not be quite enough so uh, I'm going to have to redo that but I'm going to put them outside, give them a water in a minute uh, and I'll take some, some pictures of them outside and add them on to the end of the video and put them into the page um, <clears throat> but uh, oh, there you go, thank you very much thank you for listening and if you've got any comments or any ideas or any uh, uh, any uh, advice on the best way to plant them in in the top end just not being, as I mentioned earlier not, I'm not being like, green fingered then uh, I'm happy to happy to listen and to learn thank you very much